hello there, Miss Susie Meister. <laughs> Episode 641, Sarah's high. Yeah, but like not regular kind of high, like that you think I'm high. Last night, I tweaked my back because, you know, I'm not 40 yet, but Susie said I had a case of the 40s. She has a case of the premature 40s. Premature 40s. Ooh. Also, maybe the case of a sleeping in a tent. <laughs> well, that's for sure. Is that where it happened? No, oh. I think, but, but you know, maybe like, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's like leftover, but th- I had the most comfortable night's sleep there. So it's not that it's because I slept on pillows funky and I tweaked my back and my mom is visiting from Costa Rica and she gave me some muscle relaxers. And now I feel like my lips are moving funny. <laughs> I said, it's going to be like 16 candles when that girl had so, period cramps and then all hell broke loose. We will see. I asked her, I was like, does this make me loopy? And she said, no, no, it's a muscle relaxer. So <laughs> I, tried to, yeah. I love that that's a reassurance. No, it just re- loosens your entire muscular right. system. So. I mean, it's feeling a little, feeling a little better. That's good. Did it ease and the pain? So am I. <laughs> I, I, I think so. I mean, I definitely right now feel like I can turn more, wow. and so, yeah. There is. I mean, you know, we've talked about this before when we use the phrase "it's a pain in the neck." I mean, they are, that is a <gasps> real bad thing to yeah. be is a pain in the neck. It's the worst. I never really understood. Like back pain or neck, like until yeah. like when people said, "Oh, I like threw my back out or hurt my back." I was like, "What? Come on, you know, sore back." What do you I, mean? I was always like that about migraines. Oh, I'm like, okay. How bad could it be? And then Susie. I got them, and I was like, "Oh, I see." Yeah, and then I was like, "I am so sorry." <laughs> I remember that I was driving so in the car sorry. once with an ex with an ex boyfriend, and he his back went out. And he was holding coffee or something, and I ran around a turn, and the coffee spilt on him, and he jerked because the coffee was hot, and it hurt, and he was so in so much pain, and I was like, "What the? You're oh, I was definitely not uh, uh, validating or nurturing or empathetic <laughs> or any of the above in that moment." And then I remember when I hurt my neck or threw my back out for the first time, and I was like, "Oh my god." I remember that moment. I felt so bad. Yeah. I felt so terrible. I'm like, I will never, ever discount or discredit somebody's back pain ever again. And I just look like a lamppost. So I hope the, you know, meds kick in and you are just. Oh, they're kicked in. (laughs) We are fine. And so this will be fun. This will be fun. Because, you know. Sarah got me the cutest cuckoo clock for my birthday i can't wait to show you guys yeah. and now i can finally talk about it on here because i was so excited i got it so long ago and i've been like thinking about it for so long i loved it so much that and i have always wanted a cuckoo clock and oh. i thought did i tell her this you know we talk about so many things i don't know what yeah. what i've covered with you and you're telling me i did not you just guessed I do not believe you said I would like a cuckoo clock. Because you hit the nail on the head. And she gave me a Larry David, um, like, what are they called? Mexican candle. candle. Prayer candle. (laughs) And You can pray pray to your patron saint. Yeah. I love it so much. (laughs) The patron saint of being, uh, I don't know. What's the word? Yeah. (laughs) I really... Love it, especially because like he's not religious. It's it's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the thoughtful yeah. gifts. I love them. Yeah. Did you see the lanyards from camp that were in your? Yes, day? I did. Okay. Uh, I'm just making sure we got all the the, and I tried to make them Larry David Hanukkah colored. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you put a lot of thought into it. <laughs> Really well, I went special. with a the theme. I, I and and my Jewish boyfriend was looking at me as I was packing the box, going, "Huh, you didn't make that. You didn't make me that color one." <laughs> well, you know I, what? Yes. I think I'm more enthusiastic about Judaism than he is. You might be. You <laughs> might be. It was really funny. So funny. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So hey, I just wanted to celebrate out? you and how yeah. amazing you are because you are just like. Ugh. I can't even put into words how wonderful you are. And if I start even trying, I'll probably cry. But like every time I think about like what kind of person I want to be like, I always think about Susie and you're just like the sweetest human. You always put others first. 
and do wonderful, kind things for everybody and think about others before yourself. Stop so, talking right now. See? <laughs> I hate the story. But thank you for thinking of me and your thoughtfulness. It was oh. just such a... You're the best. I'm going to make myself cry. It's probably drugs. But I do. I did think it was funny. um, On my birthday, Adam goes, do you think, you think 44 is lucky number? And I'm like, yeah, it'll give me something to look forward to since I'm 43. (laughs) (laughs) I was like. Yeah, I was going to say, wait, didn't we do something special for your 40th? That was not that long ago. (laughs) Right. Time flies. I was like, this guy. I mean, he was dead wow. serious. He was just so And you know what? Me. Now that you say it, 44 sounds way older than 43. Totally. Yeah. Do Why not is skip that? ahead for What is that sake. about? I mean, is that like, like when like you price something and like, oh, Suze, I love what's going on. I'm going to I'm gonna call you out right now What that delicious beverage that you're drinking from my favorite kind of straw. Listen, so the ongoing saga of... Our kitchen continues. <gasps> no. Yeah, we're not done. Still, yet. we're not you're, done. You know what? You can't eat in your kitchen yet. No, no. I had to g- <sighs> get um, an egg McMuffin for breakfast, and so <laughs> that's why I have a McDonald's Diet Coke in my hand. Oh, but, but aren't I their love straws it. just better? Everything is better. I don't know what they do. I do. I have read articles. They do something with like the carbonation or something to like yeah. addict you even more. Yeah, it makes sense. I love it. Yeah. And I noticed that once you start, you re- it really is a slippery slope. I, I started eating some Oreos at a camp because, like, kids were doing, Oh, like, yeah, the double stuffs. Yeah, Remember? yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember that? And then I uh, got an entire pack of them, uh, and I ate an entire – I got the organic kind. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what's our friend? <laughs> um. Our Paul Newman. Oh, yeah. Newman's own. Yeah. <laughs> Got some of those organic or ate the entire box in maybe two nights my, by myself. Then uh, on our most recent camping trip, also finished an entire box of Oreos or thing of Oreos in like three days. I'm fine to admit that. I'd say I ate about 90% of them too. <laughs> I'm fine to What's admit wrong that. with me? They're delicious. You're I human. Know. Nothing's wrong with me. And I feel like it's like the right... It's not the right fuel after a nice <laughs> the hike. Right but fuel. Well, that hike it's the must right have fuel been, for me. I, I mean, you're. I was noticing you look so slender. So what must be all these hikes like canceling out those Oreos because that must be it. But uh, I would say there. not. I am fit. I was. I am not because uh, you know sometimes people when people say they're like, oh, you're so. I was n- like not healthy when I was very skinny because I wasn't working out. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't feeding my body. I was just like in the pandemic, like, I don't want to do anything. Well, I'm not going to just withering away here. And, uh, now I feel like I'm doing all the activities. Remember when I first moved here and I was real sad because my body like wasn't oh, yeah, you were crying about physically this. able mm-hmm. to keep up with the kind of things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, now after being out here and working it and do- doing the hikes and, and, you know, yeah. really like makes me do Peloton classes. And it doesn't make me, but he, I should say he encourages, very kindly encourages me to join him in what he's already doing. And I love doing it, but have to be like, oh, oh this is the worst ever. I hate this. Well, it's the worst the whole time. I'm like such a complainer. I want to, but I love it. I'm getting now. I, now I can actually climb mountains and keep up and I don't puke every time we go on a hike or something. Really? Because he loves doing that for oh, a while. Oh, so the puking was related to you feeling like you weren't fit. You're well, saying. I think it's it it's related more to h- how high my heart rate gets. Mm-hmm. That when my heart rate gets real elevated, it causes like inflammation. That's in kind of like a, a whole bunch of stuff. So I think that when my heart rate gets really high, that is when I get all pukey. But if I have better cardio and better fitness, then my heart rate doesn't get as high. Yeah. So you're f- fit. You just cannot sleep on pillows in a weird way. No. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about that. I was, I was thinking that maybe what this is, is this is what happens when you do all the things that I did hmm. this weekend without 
And we like oh. went paddle boarding. Mm-hmm. We went climbing. We were like, you know, s- uh, scrambling up this like boulder cliff face. Like we were all over the place. And I think that maybe this is now kind of like that you said, like I, my body just needs to be warmed up first. It's mm-hmm. like a ca- old car. Oh my God. Yeah, I like didn't warm it up right. And now it's like, oh, we got like a broken belt or something like that. Yeah, you just need recovery. It's all right. Yeah, You'll I need a little okay. bit of that. A little more of these uh, wonderful Costa Rican painkillers. I bet. <laughs> Muscle relaxers, not painkillers. I bet Muscle you, um, even like on your hike, I know you're supposed to wear like proper footwear, but I bet you could wear your Rothy's if you wanted to. I told you that I wore them when I went to Hawaii and went on the. Uh, <laughs> The course where all the guys were, were doing the obstacle course yes. in the mud. I'll post those pictures again. They're really great. They're like of my Rothy's like just covered in mud. And then <laughs> they were like, the guys were like, do you want us to, ca-? for real, do you want us to carry you so you don't get your shoes wet? And I was like, no, man, <laughs> we're cool. These babies are washable. They and are. I washed them in the sink that night and wore them to the presentation that I did the next day. Yeah, they're so convenient and sustainable and for me just like the solution because they do not get gnarly and when they do you just wash them and then they really are good as new and they have so many different styles so whatever you're into they would have whether you're more casual or if you like a dressier flat um and you know how it is like we're moving into fall here so you're gonna need some new threads new shoes get that because it's like back to school shopping um oh that's so fun well i mean it is even if you're not in school anymore i know it's just that time of year so um the shoes really do look good as new after you wash them and you step up your shoes and accessories this summer and get ready to be asked are these are those rothy's plus get 20 dollars off your first purchase at rothy's.com slash brain candy that's r-o-t-h-y-s dot com slash brain candy all right somewhere recently and saw them every time i see them out in the wild i'm always like rothy's <laughs> kind of like how i'm with horses <laughs> oh look horses oh look rothy's <laughs> right well i do see it's them totally a lot, the same a lot of people have them because there's totally so many different same kinds same. like i said yeah it's the best um so yes i had a really fun adventure this weekend we went off-roading that is here's what i learned sis yeah i have i am very tuned in now to when my blood sugar crashes and I get hangry. Oh my God. I, I become, I don't know, maybe it's something about it feels out of control to me or I feel like, and I just try to, I don't know, get control in any way that I can. So I, I, I feel like I have to like Stop driving like that. You're driving too close to the edge. What are you doing? Oh Uh-oh. my God. I get ter- I get like that. Yeah. Then when we were hiking, when we were hiking, we got up to this one area. We're like, I, we haven't seen a person for a long time. And we're like on this very, you know, not very um, frequently traveled trail and like this more like, you know, kind of bushwhacking it out there. Mm-hmm. And, but like on a trail, but it's just like nobody ever goes on it. And Eli says, oh, yeah, we're kind of in, like, the perfect area where a mountain lion would have its dinner. And then I turn around, and he's absolutely 100% right. We're, like, walking across this ridge, and I turn around, and there are, like, things that look very much like caves. The rocks that we're on match mountain lions, like, exactly. It is coming up on dinner time, and I am now, like, we're definitely going to get eaten. You've taken me. Every single idea that you have is bad. This is the worst. And then he goes, can we get you a little fruit snack? <laughs> and I have a fruit like snack. And then 30 seconds later, I'm like, oh, yeah, this isn't that bad. We could probably get down here. There's no big deal. Really? Like, oh, Suze. And in the car, like, I am, like, terrified of off-roading. And then I have a snack. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is awesome. This is super fun. I didn't know you ever got like this. Oh, uh, I think it's only when I'm really – it's only when I'm working out. Like, it's when I'm really – tired because the only time it happens is whenever we're on the trail or whatever it's exactly like that snickers commercial where it's like you (laughs) turn into a real diva when you're hungry it's like and it is it it i can feel it and i go oh no hunger monster is here 
It's wow. happening. It's hap- And I know it's happening and I know by my tone and I know now because I start to feel like I need to control ridiculous things that are, are not usually problems that then become problems. So oh my that was fun to learn about on this trip. Hey, and yeah. nice that I have an understanding boyfriend who does New information who doesn't. about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, woo! You guys, big, um, so every decision you made is bad. He's like, well, that is funny because a little bit ago you said, I am perfect in every way. And I was like, <laughs> hmm, after I had the gummies, I was like, I go back to the first thing. You're fine. Um, are you guys like the Bickersons? Are you like... Uh, no, because he just lets me... We don't go back and forth. He just lets me be ridiculous. It's just one-sided bitchiness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then anytime, like, he's very good at, I think we're both good at admitting when we're not right about something or when, like, and he also doesn't, um, like, rub things in my face or, like, remind me of things, like, shame me when I get things wrong. Like, so so we have a the rooftop tent that, well, he's got a rooftop tent, but, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and it's now like, you know, I'm helping him out. He's like cleaning up all the camp stuff and putting everything away. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to take on the, the job of breaking down the tent and I'm going to do it all myself. And I was like, I got everything out of it. And I was like so proud of myself and I close it all up. And uh, he was like, man, where, oh, where is my headlamp? Like, and I said, I was like, got everything out of the tent. Whoa, we are good. He's like, where is my headlamp? I swear, like I had it. And then, you know, he's like looking around for a while. Never says like, are you sure? You know, anything like that. And he's like, yeah, I could have sworn like I hung it in the corner there. And I was like, oh, corner, not where I checked. <laughs> sure enough, very corner of the tent, exactly where it is. Then uh, we're getting ready to leave. And he's like, where are the keys? Did those get out, get, come out of the tent? And I was like, didn't no! even know they were in the tent. Uh- Got to go open it up and get the keys out of the tent. So, and not one time on the way up did I hear like, I can't believe you did that again. Or like, oh, you, you know, you take us nothing, no. which is like, I bet other people are like, well, yeah, duh, that he shouldn't be like that. Well, you would be surprised you how would... some people in relationships are. Yes. And so, yeah, I, uh, it was really nice to, to just like, he, yeah. And I think that makes it easy. So we don't, I, we're not bickering about anything. There's definitely me. Like, I don't know when we're, when he's dry, when we're driving, like, I, I just like, I'm a, there's a boulder over there. There's a hole over there. Ah, and he's so good. It's like, I've never seen driving like this ever. We went on this path that like, I have no clue how we made it through there. I honestly don't. I, in my mind, I'm like, well, th- we're definitely going to get towed out of here. Now. That's, yeah. this is where we, yeah, this is where we live now. And then I was like thinking, I'm like, man, this is going to be so like, ha- I'm going to have to comfort him when he's like all like embarrassed because nope, nope. He just crushed it. It was so awesome. There was one section that was sketchy and he built a freaking like ramp out of rocks and we went right over it. It was no problem. I'm I'm sure that this question is is obvious to you, but I genuinely want to know what is the point of (laughs) off-roading? Oh, so that you can get some of the places that we like the place we went camping that's the only way in. Okay. So you have a so destination. I, I had never experienced anything like that in my entire life. I was freaking out. I'm like, everything looks like a car commercial. The, I had no idea because like my, my parents were in, in the film industry. I've been on car commercials. I thought the cars only did that for the commercials. Yeah. I've never seen them do this stuff in real life. And so as soon as we're out there and there are Jeeps like parked sideways on rocks and like things like <laughs> right. and tents that are like them and there's like a golden retriever in the back i'm like what the hell is it this is actual life and those commercials are just showing what other uh, that's fun so this is a whole life that i did not i i thought only happened in movies and in commercials turns out there's a whole community of this it is totally fun and don't some people i love though... playing fan fiction with all of the people that we see there <laughs> don't They're so some good. people go off-roading though just for the sake of it like they don't even need yeah to get i think though th- there's those kind of trails and those kind of cars that are kind of like they just love that adventure they call them like rock crawlers or something like that mm-hmm. but you and guys are like trying designed. to get to a spot we're getting to somewhere okay and it's just more fun when you take like that road and it just happens to be that that's like the only way that you can get into some of these places. 
Gotcha. And then you see like a bunch of cars that are not four wheel drive, like parked at the bottom, like what? And you know. then you judge them and like mock them. No, in your mind. we more judge. We not judge, but there's no judging. We more uh, are when we see like the cars that shouldn't be up there that are parked like halfway up and we're like oh buddy what were you thinking with the sprinter van it wasn't gonna make it and you know those kind of things where we're like oh yeah gotcha yeah but i do get kind of nervous i get i get it is it is i mean for well this is funny i'm glad that you say that because he did say, "Do you think this is something that Susie and Adam would like, like to do, is, like Susie, Adam, and Lincoln?" Really, hoping and I was like, "Yeah, we are. that would be really fun. Like, we'll take them, like, because you could go and just like drive up there, go hike around the lake and everything, and Lincoln then drive back it. and make it." Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, Link in the back, and we're you know just like it's like Indiana Jones ride, but, but how in real long life. is this ride where you're like bouncing all over the place? Because this it sounds like oh, that part's only probably like twenty minutes, half hour. I mean, that's a long time to be bouncing. What is fun? And it's not fast. It's not because you're not going. It's not like uncomfortable because he's not driving like an idiot. Okay. It's just like going. It's almost more fun because you're like, oh, it's slow. It's it's not. And there is no fast. You can't go fast. Yeah. Okay. Except one time when I made him go faster puddle because it looked cool. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. This all sounds tolerable. And then he went through one time and he went regular speed and I was like, no faster okay. and he's like you know we're really gonna get in trouble with like my desire to do this and your encouragement would he let you drive or is this like he wants me to drive and i'm like fuck no mm-hmm. you're out of your mind you know you're that's not fun for me because i'm too stressed i'm too scared about ruining somebody else's stuff well and i've seen you just on the normal road and you're really not like you're not you're very careful i'm a i'm very careful you're a very right. careful driver <laughs> Right. Isn't that I, what Rain I Man said? I'm a very careful. Careful, careful driver. I'm very careful. Driver. <laughs> very careful. Yeah, I'm like that. Right. Oy. I'm glad yeah, you made so it out alive. I made it out alive. And, uh, you know, we're, it, it put a little bit of stress on my body, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> it's, all, it's all fine. It's just a part of the aging process, I guess. I know. Yes. It yes. sucks. Which... Well, okay. That is actually, speaking of aging process, a kind of a nice segue because I know something that you, different than uh, your physical health, but mental health, we talk a lot about your biggest fear is, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's when you're older. Yeah. That's good news for you. Oh. There was a study that looked at a whole bunch of other studies, um, meta-analysis, that... was on 2 million people that compared the effects of cognitive activities, physical activities, and social activities on the risk of getting dementia. Mm -hmm. So like which is more beneficial? And we know that all of them are good, but the one that really stood out as being the most beneficial to people or the the most uh, – that if you engage in this activity, your likelihood of having dementia was less than others uh, was – the, uh, me- oh, what the heck is it called? Like crafts, like leisure activities, mental leisure activities. What they do you, call it. Why did you say crafts? Because that's what they say in the title: doing crafts, uh, playing instruments, and do have like playing games. Wow, that leisure crafts. And now the thing, the part that I think is interesting is like some of those cross over into social activities. Yeah, but some of them you can just do by yourself, mm-hmm. and so. You know, like I think about my grandma who was knitting well into her 90s until her hands couldn't knit anymore. And, you know, like a little bit of that kind of keeps you young. Maybe like patterns and and movement and, you know, making something, creating something. They defined pastimes as anything that people engage in for enjoyment. That's that's really good news. Um, Yeah. Yesterday I was watching the... 60 Minutes episode where um, they had Tony Bennett on with uh, oh, yeah. and Lady Gaga. Yeah. And yeah. he's, well, at the time they made this, he was 95. So, like, this guy is wow. really oh, hanging in there. Wow. But he has Alzheimer's. And I, I'm not kidding you, I was sobbing, like, almost oh. to the point of hysteria because it was so moving to me um that he is gone like he doesn't remember 
right. really anything. And yet, my God, as we all already know, when that music starts, <gasps> oh, he's back. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. It freaks me out because it's like, wow. The, they had an that expert playing on musical instrument. Yeah. Talking about how music activates oh, wow. all the parts of your brain that, like, usually an activity only activates one thing, but yeah. there's an auditory component. There was a visual component, um, pleasure. I forget all the different areas, but probably memory and stuff like that well, too. Yeah, because for him, it's like totally hardwired. You know, that's yeah. who he is, and yeah. it was just so wow. moving that he went out on that stage at Radio City Music Hall, and two minutes ago, he didn't know who he was, and they the wow. curtain goes up, and he goes, "Wow, the audience!" Like he was alive. It's just oh my gosh, crazy, and so fascinating, and it's that beautiful. Is very moving, Susie. It's beautiful, but yeah, then it's over, and he doesn't remember any of it. It's yeah. hard to accept that, but for those two hours mm. or however long he did it, I mean, he was just he was back. He was Tony again. I mean, he doesn't have any memory of or doesn't have the experience or awareness that he's suffering from yeah, dementia or no, Alzheimer's. He's not suffering. He, he probably does have the awareness of joy that he gets from performing in a crowd and having people, you yeah. know, and getting dressed up and doing the thing and like what feels familiar. And Lady Gaga was saying like she's learned how to interact better and instead of giving him a choice like, hey, Tony, should we sing – um this song or this song, um, that would be hard for him. But if she said, hey, do you want to sing this song? And he'll go, okay. And then yeah. they do it. And that's just <sighs> really cool. That is really cool. There really is an art and a, a, a kind of like a formula to communicating with people who have memory or cognitive impairments. And if you can learn the language or anybody who, you know, kind of like neuroatypical like kind of learn the language to communicate with them. And then there's, you can really connect and, and kind of override the, the, you know, kind of brain's malfunction or hurdle or whatever mm -hmm. that it's struggling with in that moment. And it's really beautiful. Yeah. Lady Gaga so sweet and good at that. Remember when she, who was it, Liza Minnelli that she yeah. was with at the Oscars? Yeah. And it was, she just did such a good job. Yes. Like, working oh my god that makes me tear up yes oh. i feel that because there, she's so reverential to um the people that she admires Before. and she yeah. has such respect for them even if they're physically diminished in some way um yeah. it matters not to her because you yeah. know she looks up to them and it's so beautiful yeah. it really is it's crazy to think that like you know the as we get all like the, the things people have done in their lives and you look at somebody who's older and you kind of see them as like weak or yeah or feeble or unable to do and then you have to remember what that person was when they were younger yeah and just everything they have to offer it's really beautiful yeah and sad at the same time yeah and it's really fun to to honor them while they're still here so I'm glad for yes. people like Lady Gaga. And like he hadn't said, she, she goes, he calls me honey now because I, I don't think he remembers my name. But then um, that night at Radio City Music Hall, she walked out and she goes, hey, Tony. And he goes, Lady Gaga. And she, oh, I mean, oh. she almost, she's like, I have a job to do. So I had to hold it together, but I wanted <sighs> oh to Oh my just, God, that makes me want to cry so bad. Oh my god! My god, it's too much. I texted my Somebody's friend Kelly. Somebody's got onions like, in here. I can't take it. If if I ever get like that, just turn the music on. I'll be there. Yeah. Oh my you know? god. Yep. Somebody's cutting onions. Woo! On this podcast right now. <laughs> cutting onions. Everybody listening. Woo! Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm not cutting onions, but I'll tell you, I'm grating a lot of zucchini and making a lot of zucchini bread with my caraway yeah. pans. Yeah. Oh, I love the side by side comparison you did. Was that good? <laughs> Or what? I mean, if that didn't convince you people that these are higher quality than you have ever seen, I I can't do anything to help you because well, and beautiful. These they're beautiful and they're not stick, but they're not toxic. Right. How did they do it? Right, I do not know, but that is a it's gift. About time. 
Yeah, yeah. And because typically if something is nonstick, that means there's bad, bad news, bad, bad. bad news on there. But this, right. they have bakeware, they have cookware. I got um, a saucepan that is bright yellow because my stove is bright yellow and it looks so cool. Oh! I cannot wait to show you. It I want to see so bad. I know. When my kitchen lets me enter oh. again, I'll show right. you. Ugh. But <laughs> but I am just so loving these these products, and I can't recommend them enough. They are the best I've ever owned. Um, yeah. And here's the deal. You visit carawayhome.com slash brain candy to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners, so visit carawayhome.com slash brain candy or use code brain candy at checkout. Caraway non toxic cookware made modern. I don't know how they did it. So anyway, Uh, leisure activities can help prevent like in a big, huge, gigantic way that those who engaged in leisure activities had a twenty three percent less likelihood of developing dementia. That's huge. That is huge. I mean, and also remember that doesn't mean that you have a twenty that. That means that if the average rate of dementia is, say, 5%, yeah. that you have a 25% less likely chance yes. than that percent. Yeah. Some people get a little fusy on how that works. Yeah. And do you suppose it's the, you know, whatever lights up in your brain when you're working on leisure? Or do you think it's possible that the type of people who are oh. interesting enough... To oh, be good point. I, I'm sure they would say it's the the former, but I'm. Curious. Well, now we would have to do a study of like if you just start them. Yeah, if you force someone to have stuff. a hobby. Yeah, did it because it wasn't. They just looked at their activities, not like. The motivation for having the activity. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and they didn't, um, it wasn't like a controlled sample where they're like, yeah, you, you guys do these yeah. games, you do this. This was just kind of mapping them over time, but 2 million people. So That's awesome. That's good news. Yeah. A whole bunch. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I just, I, uh, I always think back to, not always, but I went thinking about crafts recently and think because I went to summer camp and was making these and like made you a little like lanyards and stuff for birthday. Um, hmm. uh, I remember being on the challenge when like Naya wanted to get mad at me and like make fun of me. And she was like, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to go make friendship bracelets? You're going to go do crafts? She was essentially saying, well, what are you going to do? Be uh, interesting. Activities that prevent you from Alzheimer's <laughs> and dementia when you're older? Yeah. Yes, correct. I am. Thank you. I mean, would See you, you in the old people home. Would you agree? I know that you would because I think we've talked about it, that the weird – one of the weird things about the challenge house is how <laughs> the values are inverted and the, Totally backwards. What makes you They're like, cool. oh, oh, you're just – oh, you read books? Truly. Yes, correct. Like all the things that are actually great, they act like our garbage. It's very it's really, weird. It's very strange. And then if you like I mean, shoot heroin, they think you're like super cool. <laughs> I swear, it's true. They wouldn't say that, but those are the, the uh, coolest people on the show do the worst stuff in real this life. This is true. This is true. That is backwards. It's, we always say it's, it's it's the lowest common denominator. You know, it's like that. It's like an after school special. Every- Everybody's doing it. That's yeah. what it's yeah. like. Like yeah. you have to do the bad stuff yeah. to be cool. Yeah. And let's just like not as adults do that like right. encourage each other to drink thing. Right? It seems ridiculous. I hate it. Although it's very I am strange. very supportive of you being high right now. Oh yeah. Susie is a pusher for that. You are a pusher. <laughs> not You're for- always like come on, more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess. <laughs> but you're not like, let's do shots. You're not like oh, that. No. You're more like, like, you want another splash? You want a splash? And I like. And I never say no to Susan. I splashes. like making people feel free to yes. have fun. Yeah. I and do. I can be, and that's probably why I don't do it other places because like, I don't like being out of control and I don't like that feeling. But mm-hmm. when I'm with you, I'm like, whatever, Susie's got it. Woo! 
I like sort of making the tone everyone feel comfortable and like let's mm-hmm. just have a fun time here. Yeah. See, you're the freaking best. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. What? Oh, I got some some information on fun times. Let's hear it. Uh, according to science, science, there have been three types of female orgasms that have been identified, and they are distinct and very specific. And I want to hear what you yeah, think about this. I can't even imagine. Okay. So this research was done. There was a study that was done with this type of vibrator called a biofeedback vibrator and it had like it was like blue bluetooth like connect i'm not kidding this is what this is like a scientific article Susie always laughs at my articles about no no i like, like the this. name biofeedback it's like- yeah well the real name of it was the lioness dildo so we <laughs> called it the biofeedback vibrator for science and because of the way that it had like the readings like uh, uh, the sensors and where they were placed they're able to detect movement in the pelvic floor and contractions in that area and look at the different kinds of, mm, I don't know. It's really like, I guess it's like muscle contractions yeah. because I looked at the, um, the uh, article that was published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine that, and it had almost like an EKG, like a heart re- reading kind of thing, but it like looked at, you know, like the muscles and it had like how the muscles were contracting and it had the vaginal muscles and anal muscles and it like graphed them and there it shows like almost like an earthquake. And so they broke it down. And so all these women, and it is a small sample size. There was 54 women who were in this. So they do say that there was a, it was a small scale study. Um, but they, uh, determined that there were three types. The data appears to show that there are three types of orgasms. There's a way... The, and also... Well, we're going to talk about all this afterwards. Okay. I, You're annoyed. I, I, I'm, I'm not annoyed. I'm like, I'm trying to think of what the better option would be. I just feel like we've kind of like... When you don't give things like a more scientific name, it can kind of make it seem like sillier. I don't know. Like it makes it more... And maybe they do have a sci- more scientific name for what they've labeled these. Let me just say. So here are the three kinds. A wave is a short burst of pelvic contractions that were then preceded by an uh, rhythmic pelvic floor tension and release. Then there's a volcano that's an orgasm preceded by increasing upward pelvic floor tension. And then there's an avalanche, higher oh pelvic God. floor C, higher pelvic floor basal contractions maintained throughout self-stimulation, but a downward contraction profile during and after orgasms. So the the kind of descriptions that some people said is the volcano orgasm is reported as almost every muscle in my body tenses up as the pleasure greatly intensifies. And then there's a huge release and I know it's over when I can relax. Mm -hmm. Then the the avalanche is my body starts shaking and then I suddenly explode into orgasm. My body snaps in a sort of spasm, but a good spasm over and over again until I eventually start to calm down finally before letting my muscles relax. And uh, the most common experienced is the wave one, 26 out of 54, followed by the avalanche, 17 out of 54, and the volcano, 11 out of 54. Can you read the wave one again? Because I don't... I don't remember. The wave one is... Where they say, like, it feels like. Uh, you know, they... Let me see if I... I pulled it up on... on let's see what it says. These Volcano. all sound the oh, same Oh, it didn't to me. give... Oh, it feels like I'm on the ocean with the waves moving over and over. It's probably more like... It's like rhythmic contractions. And hmm. if you were to see the the readouts of this, it looks very different. It does look... Um, in the wave one, it looks kind of like waves, like it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And it's kind of more like drawn out. The avalanche one looks like a buildup, like something kind of gets to a very like steep cliff and then it drops down and then it's frequent contractions. And then the other one, the volcano volcano one is like slow, slow, slow. And then there's a whole bunch of Activity. Stuff, contract, activity, and then relax. 
Wow. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. And they have like the elapsed time in seconds on here and everything. So are like, they all the same? Uh, um, roughly, man. or is one like really? See, the long numbers are so small. Yeah. The the avalanche and the wave are mo- longer, and the volcano is is intense but short. And are they trying to say that anybody could maybe have all three, or that you? Well, as this a person- is the real interesting part. They said that it's kind of like they believe that you can only have one type because in their study, there were none that had both. They say they don't know if it, if it's for sure. They don't know. Mm-hmm. And they, of course, there's always limitations of the study. Like I would imagine that maybe like orgasms after time, like change, like mm-hmm. if you've, cause you know, yeah. I feel like over your lifetime, if you, over your lifetime and even in the, in the moment, like if you're engaged in like maybe sexual activity for longer than just one orgasm and like maybe like on like a third and fourth one like after time it's oh, different okay. you know something like that what is the point of knowing this like why do you think they they this oh. is important to know uh, I think anything that that helps us know about how it also changes how orgasms were achieved, and that the pressure, like as it builds up, like some people like more direct stimulation, some people like stimulation mm-hmm. in different areas, some mm-hmm. people like it softer. Like this is going to be. Some people like it like slow and then fast. Like this really shows that the the reason why there's such a mm. a difference is because we have very different ki- types of orgasms. Hmm. Yeah. And do you think, why do you think that they say female orgasm? Like, it seems like these might apply to men too, in a certain way. Oh, that's way. interesting. You know what I mean? I don't mean? know. I'd be, I'd be interested to, to, to know Me about too. that. Me too. Or do you think do, it's I, all the is same? There, is there multiple kinds of male orgasms? Well, I do know that they, there are because there you have like a, a what is it called? Prostate. Like if you stimulate yeah. the prostate, you get an orgasm that way. I know there are different kinds of. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's if it if it feels. Oh, probably. This research has got to have been done on men already. Guaranteed. <laughs> right, it's probably. There's like- no way that men weren't like, yo, hook my dick up to this, and let's see what happens. <laughs> Please. Hook my dick up. <laughs> right. They're masturbating into like pies and 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 <laughs> and melons and shit. Right. Or whatever they're doing it There's into. There's no mysteries. Yeah. They're definitely like, this has already been done for them. That's 100% so for sure. So, Do you think yeah. that you identified where you fall in this category? Like, I, I was trying any. to think about it. I'm going to have to think about it next time. I yeah. think, I think that the wave one sounded pretty familiar. familiar. <laughs> Yeah. Well, next time you're having one, you'll be thinking about brain candy and um, the research yes! you're doing. <laughs> I like that. So you're just, like that's we all need to just do some research tonight. Yes, for no. brain, for science, for science. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm doing this for science. Yeah, <laughs> the wave one. It didn't say, but I feel like I have experienced that spasm thing before. Which one? But not like my oh, body like snap. Body. But I've had had I have had a spasm. Like once where I did think I was going to like s- throw my neck out. No. <laughs> yeah. Or you like your body just like tenses up so much. Maybe that is it. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. Fuck it. Hey, we're going to have to just do some experimenting. Yeah, we do. We need to. Yeah. We'll check into yeah. it. Yeah. And now, and also I wonder if it's different with partners, if it's different, like. Right. Attach her to that machine. <laughs> Give me the info. We have follow-up questions. We have follow-up Science. questions. Yes. So. I always like hearing those stories about, uh, uh, you know, women doing research on, well, it's usually women doing research on women. It's interesting that they attach them to that thing that monitors whatever. Well, the, the, it's kind of how the study came about, like the order of how it happened isn't, I would say typical Mm -hmm. because the, the company that developed the vibrator did the first study where they were just collecting data on does this thing where, work or whatever like yes yeah. because then they wanted to develop an organ or not an orgasm they wanted to ve- develop they have different vibrators that work differently based on what kind of orgasm you have hmm. 
and like vibrate differently. And you can like set it to like work with, you know, now it sounds like an ad for like this vibrator. It's like, great. Um, And so they did the study. And then a, another research team went in there for academic purposes and did a follow-up study on their study to you and had like controls and variables and like retested it and validated their findings. Right. So if you could identify which kind you tend to have, then maybe you yeah. would know what device yeah, would they be. have. They have different, they, the, the ocean wave is the one for the wave one, obviously the, well, yeah. And the volcano and the avalanche. That's they what have, they named the products. Yeah. Well, I think it's the setting that you can oh. use on the same product. <laughs> That's uh, wild. Yeah. yeah. It does look like that. Yeah. Wow. Good for them. Yeah. Keep the ocean the wave work, orgasm scientists. looks like a sine wave graph. Mm-hmm. S- sine wave. I don't know that yeah, word. Yeah. It's like that yeah, mathematical that. thing that you used to do on like the TI-85, you know? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The pelvic floor contracts and then releases multiple times. The number of times can vary. First quickly, then slows down until rest. Oh, that's cool. And then, (laughs) yeah. That's the muscle relaxer talking. Probably is. I'm like, oh, this looks great. (laughs) Tell me more about the lioness. Tell me more. Yeah. (laughs) So... That is an interesting one. We know about the feed type of feed. You can check that out um, in, yeah, the Journal of, I think it was like Journal of Sex and, and Medicine or something like that. I just deleted it because, not deleted it, but Gosh, closed it on. Where right, is it? Journal, yeah, the Journal of Sexual Medicine. Maybe, the Journal of Sexual Medicine, which is like, le, like fucking legit, you know. Maybe like we'll those. do a poll on Instagram and see what people ooh, think. Which they, kind of, ooh. Yeah, yeah, take a look at the. Yes, yeah, so I'll those put the graphs. chart and then um, yeah, Ooh, they can yeah, yeah, choose yeah. what they Ooh. think they have. Smart. Shout out to the lioness dildo though. Yeah, Getting the job done. Yeah, no she matter what kind of. Really nice. She does. Yeah, the uh, the picture in the uh, article is like of a you know woman in the moment, and it said the vol- volcano sounds like the most fun under the image. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They yeah. Do you think? Fine. Do you have? Do you have a kind that th- you sound? You feel like you. No, it's like when you described each one, I'm like, that sounds right. I don't know. I know. Me too. You don't sound I'm right. like, that sounds right. That sounds like. So then it's one of those things I'm like, do I even know? Like, what? I yeah, need to know myself that, a little more. That, that worries me about myself. Right? I hate these things. I hate where it's like, you know, it, it's it's pretty sad when like adult women are like asked, oh, what do you like? I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know because those things aren't prioritized. <laughs> Well, yeah, and you know oh. how I was kink shaming the um, people with the sex dolls and stuff, and then I was feeling like that, you know, the, with this whole monkeypox thing. I know that this is the whole conversation about like it's not an STI, but like you tend to get it during intimate, uh, long exposure and stuff like that, and then mm-hmm. they don't want to stigmatize um, gay guys because that's like AIDS all over again and right. whatever. But when I'm with my gays, I'm like, okay, I get it. I agree. But like, can't everyone just stop fucking for one second while <laughs> we sort this out? Because I can't relate to the 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 culture of like, whether it's gay or straight or whoever, like banging all the time. I just like, calm down, everybody. But like with different people, we're the same person. Uh, Different. Okay. That's yeah. Like having got, all got these it, sex it. partners. Like, what are you talking about? Banging the same person all the time is great. No, so that's fine. For your health. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm just talking about like promiscuity in particular. Okay. But, you know, I'm just promiscuity like, we're shaming. Yeah, no. that's what I'm shaming. Just for a minute. Just for a minute. And then you can get back to it. Just let us sort this get out. Back to banging. We gotta yeah. get it under control. There are not enough vaccines at the moment. Oh my gosh, it is very scary. I I, I Googled it when my rash was yeah, when I at it. Put when, the fear when of Susie God in planted you. the idea. Luckily, I wasn't hungry when Susie said that, really thinking that I'm out of control. And- <laughs> well, that's me projecting because, you know, I do not want any of these things. So I'm right. like making sure yeah. it ain't going to happen. Yeah. Uh, if you do get one of these things and you have to take a pill, yeah. there's a new study that came out that shows the body position that you are in impacts how quickly pills kick in. And not just a little bit. We're talking like... So much that 
it's the difference between it. It's like almost looking like the pill is effective or defective. Tell me. Laying on your left side, left hand side, makes it slower for pill absorption. Who's laying down taking pills? Anybody who's in a hospital bed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Most people who are injured and need pills. Okay, but I was picturing their head on the pillow. So you're just saying like reclined in any way. So listen to this. Okay. There are four, the team that did this research tested four postures, standing upright, laying on your back, laying on the left side, and laying on your right side. Okay. Think about like people in uh, like elderly homes and like people who <laughs> are like confined to a bed or my mom after she just had surgery yeah, yeah, yeah. on her body. Yes. They had no idea that there was going to be this big of a difference. It's insane. I like this, this, it, this is one of those, we should have figured this out a way fucking long time yeah. ago. And after knowing this, think about how every single study on a medication or pill, they never said, can you please lay on this? We're like all over the map with how these pills were taken and what yeah. side we don't have any information on that yeah okay taking pills while laying on the right side was the best option okay. that dissolved a standard medicine pill in 10 minutes i like how you the call it second, a medicine pill <laughs> I don't know well why that's what they called it because like a standard like i think they probably say a sugar it's like probably like a sugar pill or oh. probably like something <laughs> okay. that like that that like can measure how fast like something there's probably a, a, a i don't know like how fast it's supposed to like a dissolving rate or something like that i don't okay. know how it works um the second was standing upright, dissolving the pill in 23 minutes, which was about the same time as lying on your back, but laying or lying on your left side yeah. took up to a hundred minutes to fully dissolve the pill. Do they know why? Yeah. Cause of where things are in your stomach, like where certain valves are and where things like, um, uh, the anatomical structure, basically, mm-hmm. and gravity, that they don't start being absorbed until they get to the stomach. And the closer the pill lands to the last part of st- the stomach, the an- antrium or something like that, the faster it starts to dissolve. Did you say how many minutes? A hundred? A hundred. We're talking the difference between 10 minutes like an and a hundred minutes. That's really shocking. Shocking. Like, could you imagine if you were the, now I wonder if people who are left-handed or right-handed, what side they lay on, things like that. Then you go to a hospital yeah. and you're like, they administer the same meds to one person who's laying on their right side and it gets absorbed 10 minutes. And the other person's like, I don't feel it. I really don't feel anything. I need another dose. And then that person's all fucked up afterwards. And they're like, what, what's happening? You didn't tell us that you were like that. And it's just because of absorption rate. I hope they put out like a press release to hospitals. You know, and also now like I'm I'm reading this, it's almost like I'm I'm more I'm realizing more the like second time around, like thinking about this information, just how significant this is. Like the article it says the article itself says beyond the oh that's interesting factor, this study could have very meaningful applications in healthcare. Like I'll say. Simply change. Yeah, like huge. This is very big. It you know. really is, Sarah. I just felt like I just, now it's I, even cooler of an article than I thought it was when I first. It really is. I mean, truly, I know it sounded funny when I'm like, who's taking a pill lying, lying down? Yeah. But, you know, that's because my vitamins or whatever I take is just going about my day. But I truly, that could make a huge difference in hospitals. Huge. Yeah unbelievable and how we like how, yeah that 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 just such a slight difference yeah and if you're familiar with the pill being absorbed and how the studies are done if the studies say that oh this pill should be active or like start taking effect in about 20 minutes mm-hmm. but then you have a, a a patient who maybe like my mom had a hematoma on yeah. her right side so- left side. So she had to lay on her right side. So if it were the opposite, yeah, yeah, that was good. If it were the opposite, she would have had absorption in one tenth the time. Unbelievable. Or 10 times the time, 10 times the time. It would take 10 times as long. What? Unbelievable. I can't. I'm glad we know this. 
Yeah, you are welcome. I feel like this should have been in the New York Times or something. Right. When did this come out? Um, oh, this is new. This is this was this came out this morning. Oh, okay. I'll give him a minute then. <laughs> give him a minute. Because we yeah. need to spread the word. Yeah. I am going to tell everybody this. This is yeah. classic brain candy content. Classic. Good job, Sarah. You heard it here first. We should wind it down actually because we can't top that yeah. anyway. I know. I mean, what do you want? We got orgasms and 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 drugs. I wonder what side I was laying on when I took this pill. Oh my God. We're, oh, that's I, I was to standing ask you. upright. Did they yeah. include just sitting? Oh, good this? question. No, I think that the laying down. I think that would be standing up because it has idea. to do with the position that your the stomach torso. is in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's where your stomach is and where that pill drops into your stomach. Like if it drops next to that. Eight, the magic pouch down there. That thing that, that is absorbing it starts with the name. I can't remember. Atri- eight, I would keep wanting to say atrium, but that's not <laughs> it um, at all. And yeah. yeah, you get it in your atrium and then things are great. That's not it. What the hell is that word? <laughs> Antr- antrum, antrum, the antrum. I've never even heard that word. Yeah, it's it's the, it's like a plug hole, <laughs> they say, that it veers off to the right in most people. A plug hole in my body? Yeah, well, that like opens up between your stomach and your lower intestines, like the thing that absorbs everything, your stomach and your, or uh, large intestines. That's first. You know how J- Jerry Seinfeld does this bit about how like, you know, in um, medicine commercials, they'll show that human body and it's just like the <laughs> yes. inside is just the tube and then the stomach. Yes. And yes. for real, that's my whole That is what I picture as well. Of the anatomy of a human being. And then yeah, the but doctor... that little tube comes in on one side and goes out on another side and that's it. <laughs> and he'll tell the doctor like you having this problem and he'll go in the back and look in a book and he'll be like, that wasn't the tube or the stomach or the circle. Because <laughs> um, it's so mysterious in there. I truly don't know what happens in our bodies. That's all it is. A tube, a stomach, and then little swirly things. That's it. It's one of those. And And the the tube, when it drops through the tube into the circly thing, and then connects to the swirly thing, the swirly thing entrance is on the right-hand side, so we need to lean that that way. That is great. That is actually more insightful to me than any of the fancy words. (laughs) Like, okay, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'm, I, I get this. I'm, I'm onto this. Okay. Yes. So there you go. We're just teaching you about your body today. Over here, we've got to play some games. Yeah. And make and sure Sarah is fed at a reasonable schedule to avoid Definitely, or I will be so conflict. cranky. Yes. Sarah has never been cranky with me one day in her entire life, ever. Uh, that is not a joke. I've never seen you. You probably keep me well fed. <laughs> That's the secret. Yeah. Wow, I'm doing something right then. Okay. Well, all, and also we're like not climbing mountains together. Mm-hmm. We're like hanging out and drinking wine and eating cheese. Good point. So yeah, I'm in a great fucking mood. <laughs> but if I like go, I mean, I would have like a half a, I had like a pancake and a half in the morning. We went hiking and we went paddle boarding. Then... Yeah, you need After to pack that, some I'm oranges like, or something, man. Right. So, yeah, we got these, like, little energy gummies. Like, they're, like, little treats that are just, like, fast acting. And they, like, 30 seconds. I'm not kidding. 30 seconds. I'm like, ah, oh, what a beautiful day. This is great. <laughs> now what she's going to start, like, laying down on her right side on the trail while she takes them. Just yeah, to sure. I'm totally going to. I'm like, hang on. I got to chew it on this side. Yep, 100%. It couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. Let's just try it. See. For and, science, you know. Um, yeah, that was yeah. really – I learned a lot today, Sarah. Thank you. Good, good. We learned about female orgasms. We learned about the importance of crafts and playing instruments. Mm-hmm. Susie told us an amazing story about Tony Bennett. Yeah, it was very moving. Really heartwarming. Yeah. We did good. Good work, everybody. Yeah. Make yep, sure you yep. check out our merch. It's such a nice little store we have. Sure do. And good quality stuff. Let me tell you, my backpack – that thing is the best. Yeah, I have the I duffel bag. It. And Link, it's Link's favorite. We love it. It's oh, so, so nice. Cool. Um, we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.